So today we are going to be looking at knots. Now I know there's been a lot of um, videos on the number file already about knots. So that's zero. That's one, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. that's five. But I want to look about something specific about knots. I'm going to look at the surfaces that have knots as their boundary. Now don't worry if that doesn't quite make sense yet. We're going to going to visualise it better. But in order to visualise it, I think we want some 3D models. And I am many things, but a crafter is not one of them. So I've enlisted some help. I am not able to make these models, but I know someone who is. I got you. <laughs> this is Elian, as you will know. Uh, Elian, a regular number filer and a friend of mine. So I think what we should do, mm -hmm. oh, you've already got your crochet hook. Amazing. Mm. I am going to teach Elian a bit about how to make a knot surface. Um, and then Elian is going to very quickly crochet some things in the speed of light. It's going to be, it'll be like magic. We're going to start with, what's your favourite knot, Elian? The trefoil knot. The trefoil. I mean, the simplest knot is the unknot. This is the unknot, no crossings. Um, but the trefoil knot is the knot with the fewest non-zero number of crossings. So this is going to be a little insight into how I draw knots. Whenever I'm on a phone call, 90% chance I'm going to be doodling knots like this. So this is the trefoil. Actually, there are two. This is distinct from this knot. Alien has done a video about knots and hugs with it's your okay. mum. Yeah, with my mum. Very sweet. Um, that explains about chirality. There's a chirality issue, yeah. But that is not what this video is about. We're about surfaces. So what I want to do is get a surface um, with the boundary being that knot. So what I mean by that is get a kind of 3D-ish shape um, is not going to be filled in, it's not going to be solid. Um, but if you were to attach the outside of this, and we'll see once we've got the knots, um, it will be the trefoil. So the first step is we're actually going to put some directions on this knot. I've got some arrows, we're going around there, there. This method would still work if we were to go in the other direction. Right, that is enough. What we want to look at here now is how we can keep the knot going. We could draw a little circle here for these bits, and we've still got a little loop. So this continues around a circle. If we were to, at this crossing, go the other way and keep going around here, we would then have some problems. These two are going in the same direction. But you draw around the outside and get another loop. This is so interesting. This is how it came together when I was crafting it. Sophie sent me some pictures, and I just made the pictures out of wool, but um, this makes sense now. Really, what we've done for each crossing is we've decided either we're going to go this way or this way, and we choose the direction which way we split the crossing based on what keeps the circle flowing. OK, so now we've got our two circles. We've got a little one here. I'm going to draw them more blobby because the actual ins and outs doesn't matter. Not if you can squish them and pull them and turn them without cutting them to make a different knot, then they're the same. OK, and we're going to kind of really put in the crossings. And then we've got a crossing here, so that's going to be a little band twisting over. One here is going to be another band twisting over like this. And one here, another band twisting over. So it should look like two circles joined by three twisting bands. What would this look like if you were to crochet it, do you think? So, I know how to crochet a circle. It looks like this. Okay. Here is another circle. And now we have three twisted bands joining them together. So here is the, the surface that you're talking about. And the green, this neon lime green boundary, that should be the trefoil knot. That's amazing. So these two at the end of the two circles, this inner circle is this inner circle here, which is kind of equivalent to that loop. Now this circle at the back, there's another one is this one at the back. Imagine that this is like kind of zoomed out and blown up or something. So this circle around here is this one. And then this loop becomes that twisty and it's got a little, a little twist as well in it. Yeah, I feel you. I had to <laughs> make sure real hard when I was doing this that they all twisted the same direction. Yeah, this one is this twisty. And then this one is this twisty. So I guess we can call them bands. And actually, there is something called the Euler characteristic, which is written Kai. Mm -hmm. It's named after Euler. There are many things named after Euler. So join a club. Who knows Some if it's that? Too many. <laughs> Some might say too many. But the Euler characteristic is the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces. So for this knot, the Euler characteristic, well, vertices are more complicated than you might think because we are counting these bits 
as vertexes, vertices. So mm -hmm. this is a vertex. This is a vertex on our diagram. So are these. So in total going around, there are 12 vertices. Six yeah. up top, six underneath. I see that. Edges, again, not so easy. Each of these bands has two edges, one on each side. Mm -hmm. Would agree? Mm -hmm. So that's going to add six altogether. And now each of these, we actually count that as one edge, that as one edge, that as one edge, that as one edge. Which actually does really make sense, because if you consider all these are vertices, we've got edges mm -hmm. going between the vertices. So the number of edges? 18. Yep, yep exactly. <laughs> 18 edges and faces, both sides are the same. So we've got the two circles and then the three bands. So there are five faces. So the Euler characteristic for this is minus one. Minus one. Yeah. Because a sphere has famously two. Yeah. Um, but for our Trobius leap, it's minus one with one disc cut out. It feels an awful lot like there are three holes here. It does, but they're the same hole. I can get that because when I was crocheting the green part, mm. um, I did that in one single exactly. continuous. Like I went all the way around. So there's just one hole. So there's one hole. So I went all the way around one. outside the hole. Wow. So. <laughs> Now there's a second way um, of working out the Euler characteristic, and that's when we take the original knot, and this time I don't care so much about the directions. Here I was being very careful with the crossings, here I'm not so much. And what I'm gonna do is, it's called chessboarding, which essentially means you decide that the outside is one color, in this case, I want to say white, it's brown, it's brown paper, but it's <laughs> blank, non-color. And then we color in alternating pieces, right? And you look at the number of sections. These are called Seifert surfaces. Actually, this whole thing is called the Seifert algorithm. The other question you might have is, why can't we just get our trefoil knot like this, squash it down like this and color it? And the answer is, if you imagine this is kind of a twist and this is like 3D, this is then not the knot with the boundary with the trefoil. It's not the knot. It's not the knot. <laughs> Um, and one way to see this is there is another formula. I tell you what, if we count the number of areas, we've got S equals three. We'll call that S because they're called Seifert circles. And the number of crossings is three. So we have another formula where our Euler character chi is S minus C, which in this case is going to be zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. So there's no way this and this are the same thing because they have different Euler characteristics, mm, yeah. which is one way of doing it. The other way is you can think about this. Almost imagine picking it up in the mm -hmm. air stretching this out, you actually will get a Mobius band. So this is the Trobius, <laughs> as we have now named it, our little, little Trobius friend. This is actually the Mobius loop. So what we've established is that the boundary of a Mobius loop is a trefoil knot. The boundary of a trefoil knot is this, our Trobius loop. Shall we do one more? Yeah. I think, I think we take it up a level. We've done three. <laughs> Do a knot with four crossings. Okay, let's do it. So, this is going to go around like this, around there. Okay, we've got our massive, mm -hmm. sometimes called 4-1, sometimes a figure of eight knot. What's the next step, Alien? Okay, we give it directions? We give it directions. I'm just trying to make sure I've got an arrow in each of the little sections. Mm. Okay, now what's the next step, Alien? We draw the little circles. We draw the little circles. Yeah. What we want to make sure with all our circles is that the arrows go in the same direction. So here, yeah. at this crossing, we have two choices, right? We can either split it like this or like this. Mm. But if we split it this way, we have, well, we've got up, down, down, up. Or this way, we get out, out, in, in, which this doesn't work. We can't have this. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they've got to keep continuing, so we yep. go for this, this way. So yeah, you can either think of it within the circles or think about what we do at each yeah. crossing. Yeah, I think about the, the, the loop, the circles, okay. little whirlpools. So we, yeah, we've got a little whirlpool here. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have a whirlpool here no. because otherwise these two come into the point. Mm -hmm. Is this a whirlpool? It is yes. a whirlpool. We've got a little whirlpool here. And also all the way around the, oh, no, because that one's going the other way. But, but this inner bit here, ah, oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, so we've got a little whirlpool that goes basically round like this. Mm. So if we zoom out and do something a bit like this, we have one circle here, we've got a little wrap, it's like an apple, isn't it? But then you've got leaf on top. Oh, yeah. And now the next step, put the twisties in, Get the twisties which is putting in. these crossings back in. So mm -hmm. we are going to go like that. How many between this section and this section? One. One. So we'll take it here. Mm -hmm. I'm mapping against 
the crossings are already there. And now between these and this one, we've got two. So we've yeah. got this one and this one. So I think we're going come from the sides. like there. Yep. And then Alien is my, not a fact checker, but my twist checker. <laughs> now you've also made this one. I have. But made the circles all the same size. The I circles yeah, are yeah. all the same size in this. So you can see we've got three kind of circular hubs. Here's our first circular hub. I'll do it in this orientation. And then we've got the twisties that join it to the second circular hub. Oh, and this has like four things. It has four things. Just like this one has yeah. one, two, three, four, nine. The central one, it's got kind of two coming out this way and two coming out that way. And they're twisted um, in relation to each other. So the central hub has four. So you can see these ones are almost coming out vertical and then twisting. And then from the back of this, they come out horizontal and twist to the, the final hub at the back. I was looking at this, this was a very interesting thing to do. Same properties again, where you get to crochet all the way around the outside. Yeah. The green is like one single continuous loop. And I was looking at it, I don't see this as being a figure eight knot. This is a very bizarre kind of octopus, well, quadtopus <laughs> looking, looking structure. How is this a figure eight? And then I was like, Hang oh, on a second. Hang on a second. <laughs> this is so cool. Now I could do this with any knot. Yes, because mm -hmm. there are two with five crossings. Yeah, so that's going to be cool. That will be more cool. By the time you next see us, we'll be swarming in crochet knots. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd like to see a lot more of how this knot surface was crocheted, and I mean a lot more, I'm talking like half an hour with commentary and all sorts. I should, I should use this one for pointing because it's very cute. And then we've got Togepi pink in here. <laughs> you see what I mean? Go over to our Patreon page. We've got the full half hour for Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see more videos about knots, more videos with Sophie, more videos with Alien, there are also links down in the description. Go and check it all out. But we can do, we can take that one step further. We can do even better than that. Two artistic trefoil knots. I kind of uh, call them like, you know, trefoil standing on its own two feet. <laughs>